So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, no doubt uh, that uh, ripeners play a very big role in our industry. Um, you know, when you look at the amount of acres we, we've gained just from the, the industry growing, um, hats off to the processors who process over 16.6 million tons of cane this year. When you look at our start dates, we're starting in September uh, without the hurricanes and uh, trouble getting people in because of COVID. I think we would have started a little early at a few factories, but you don't have to go back too far to 20, uh, the 2019 crop to see what's our biggest threat of, as our in, uh, for our industry, and that's freeze. Um, with that said, we have to start processing cane in the month of September if we're going to be successful. Uh, I put up uh, here uh, the uh, average TRS of a couple of trials uh, from San Gabriel with 299. Um, and these are hand cut, hand clean cane. So we're looking somewhere in the 175 to 180 range for the last three years. Uh, when you put that down uh, to, to a real world situation with a mill where you have trash and such coming in, those are 140s. We can't operate this industry profitably without ripeners and they definitely play a very big role. Um, let's talk about the influence of treatment to harvest interval early in the season. Um, we did some work in St. Gabriel at the Sugar Research Station. Uh, we put out our first ripener on August 10th um, and we harvested this trial on sub September 22nd. This gave us a 43 day uh, ripener uh, interval. Uh, we also put a second application uh, on different plots on August 21st. And that gave us a 32 day treatment to harvest interval. And then we also include, included an untreated check uh, to compare with. So when we look at our TRS values uh, from the, the application made on August 10th, uh, definitely our highest TRS, 255 pounds of sugar per ton. Um, when we go uh, delay that application by 11 days, uh, the TRS values was 219, uh, the check a 174. Uh, so, so no doubt from a TRS standpoint, uh, big gains. When we look at tonnage, uh, er, putting it out that early, we're still in the grand growth phase, especially with that August 10th application. We lost about six tons compared to the untreated check. I'm not sure how we only lost one ton uh, in the, with the August 21st application. Uh, but that's the data. But when we look at sugar per acre, that's what we get paid on uh, as from a form standpoint. Um, definitely uh, putting out ripener had a, a major benefit uh, over 1,100 pounds of sugar uh, in both cases. So if you dig a little deeper into this, um, you know, you can talk about just the pure increases uh, in terms of TRS compared to the untreated control. So at 43 days, we had a 47% increase in TRS uh, compared to a 26% increase in TRS. But I had a grower pose the question to me, well, what value are you starting at when you're applying the ripener? And, and what kind of impact are you, you, you having on it? And, I, and at first I dismissed it. And, and he, made, he continued to push me and it made me ask that question. So we actually went and sampled the cane uh, prior to the application of, of the ripener on August 11th. And uh, we had 87 pounds of sugar per ton on that day. Um, so if you do just do a little math, if you look at how many pounds of sugar did we gain uh, by the time we harvested this test, for the August uh, 10th application, we gained 168 pounds of sugar per ton or 3.9 pounds of sugar per day. For the August 21st application, we gained about 110 pounds. And I got a little asterisk there. I assumed about a two pounds per day was put out 11 days later, but 110. But you gained 3.4 pounds of sugar per day. And the natural uh, ripening from the untreated check, we gained about 87 pounds, which is two pounds per day. So to me, this, I, creates an opportunity for us to do some deeper thinking and some deeper learning here in the future uh, about you know, really the impact. It's not a linear 
increase that we're seeing is what uh, the, these uh, data indicate to me. Um, we're gonna talk about the influence of uh, glyphosate uh, rates early in the season. Uh, also, we did some work where we put it out a little earlier. Uh, we put this stuff out uh, on August 4th uh, on some 613. Um, we, we had a couple different treatments. We put out uh, ha almost a half rate of, of glyphosate uh, and there's been a trend to some growers trying to put out less glyphosate, a lower glyphosate dose, but for an extended amount of time. Um, we also included uh, that three ounce rate plus intake uh, the standard 5.3 ounce uh, rate, and we had an untreated check for comparison. And we also harvested this test on September 22nd. And the treatment to harvest interval was 49 days on this study. Um, when we look at TRS, we got our best response from the 5.3 ounces at, at that length of time, not surprising. Um, the, the three ounces of Pyramax, uh, increased TRS above the untreated check uh, in the neighborhood of about 30 pounds. Um, when we did the combination of power max at three ounces plus eight ounces of intake, um, not, not a, a improvement of uh, in sugar per a, a ton as compared to the power max alone. Uh, tons per acre, we took a, a pretty big whack uh, with this variety. Um, you know, losing uh, nine tons uh, at 49 days with 5.3 ounces. That's hard to, to, to overcome. When we look at sugar per acre, uh, not a whole lot of difference statistically, numerically though, uh, in these cases uh, with this ripener at 49 days, we actually decrease sugar per, per uh, acre. And that's not the objective of using ripener for our industry. Um, Experimental compounds, uh, always looking for, for new options. Uh, we did this work on some 299 at the Sugar Research Station. Uh, looked at uh, Caprino. Caprino is a, a herbicide uh, that is uh, used in the corn industry. Actually had looked at it uh, in some basic grass control work and saw some interesting things. So I, I thought it may fit somewhere into that mix. Uh, Clethodim, uh, this is a product uh, it's another herbicide. It is used in um, in South America to somewhat in Argentina. They prefer it to glyphosate. Um, so we wanted to evaluate it. Uh, Glucopro was a, a product uh, brought to me by um, Lucas Petrie in the northern part of the industry. Uh, and uh, he just had some interest in the product because it showed some benefit in sugar beets. So. Uh, we went ahead and put these, these products out. We sampled uh, these plots, hand cut uh, 10 stalk samples at 37 days after application and at 53 days uh, after application. Uh, first of all, the Caprino and Clethodim are, are herbicides. Uh, the EPA has not registered these products for use and we only look at them in an experimental uh, way. So I wanna make that disclaimer uh, before we get any further. Um, in terms of what product gave us our most ripening uh, capacity, that would be the clethodium. Uh, statistically better, both at 37 and at 53 days above the untreated check. Um, I see some potential in the Caprino. Um, you know, that 1.5 ounce rate, that was a rate I just decided on. I think we need to, to modify it. I really like it. It does not kill the top of that cane. It doesn't blow the top out. Uh, so, so you still continue to have some vegetative growth. It kind of reminds me a lot of like modus, uh, what we see with that. Uh, the, gluco, the glucopro uh, response, uh, not no response at 37 days. Uh, but as we get out to 53 days, we're starting to see a, about a 10 pound pickup. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that product some more in the future. Uh, one of the things that I did not like about the clethodim uh, was what it did to the stalk. Uh, if you look at the picture, that single stalk on the right-hand side of your screen, um, it, it, uh, it made it like it almost cut that stalk three quarters of the way through. Uh, definitely blew the top out, blew, blew out the apical marrow stem, and the, the vegetative growth uh, stopped with that compound. 
We also were uh, contacted by MA Patu to look at an, another product um, that they had a company that was uh, trying to sell a, a new ripener into the market called FiberTech. Um, there was no uh, university or USDA data associated. Uh, they just had um, testimonials from the company and they asked us to, to, to look at this product. So we put it out on August 20th at the, the Sugar Research Station, again on some 299. Um, the FiberTech had two parts uh, to that material. We put out part A at 16 ounces and part B at 256 ounces per acre. We also included Roundup PowerMax as our uh, standard and we had an untreated check. And here we sampled the plots at uh, 42, 48 and 56 days after application. Uh, cane was harvested on October 15th. Uh, the cane was lodged from, from um, the hurricane would, one of them would pass. But um, when we look at the data, um, regardless if we look at 42 all the way to 56 days out, uh, the FiberTech uh, product had no improvement in TRS uh, compared to the untreated uh, check uh, at any of those points. And if you look at the industry standard, the PowerMax uh, at 5.3 ounces, uh, you know, significant increase over time compared to, to the standard, uh, the FiberTech or the untreated control. In terms of tonnage per acre, a uh, little numerical decrease that we saw, we see with uh, PowerMax about three and a half tons, uh, right in line where we, we would think that'd be. Sugar per acre, no statistical difference, but our highest sugar per acre was with, uh, obtained with the PowerMax. Uh, and another point they were pushing is that it would reduce stock fiber. We didn't see that in the lab. The fibers all remain the same. Um, some of our commercial experiments um, that we did in um, 2020, um, we uh, had a couple of those go out. Uh, the first one was done at uh, 90 South Farms. Um, it was uh, done in coordination uh, with Mr. Chris Gravois. Um, I want to thank Mr. Tom Wolf with TM Aviation for applying uh, these treatments and also Dr. Uh, Ryan Viator uh, and his, uh, his technician, uh, Mr. Heat, for helping uh, harvest uh, and getting these plots out as well. So we had a couple different uh, treatments. Uh, we went with our standard 5.3 ounce rate of uh, PowerMax. We also included um, um, half rate of PowerMax for another treatment. The third treatment was a half rate of PowerMax plus eight ounces of intake and we had an untreated check and we harvested this on uh, October 11th. And thankfully, uh, uh, Dr. Rich Johnson came to my rescue uh, with his way wagging because we had some issues that day. Um, when we look at uh, TRS, um, uh, we, we, we ran the samples two different ways. Uh, we cut a 10 stalk sample and we also collected uh, a billeted samples from um, the way wagon. Uh, we, we pressed the, the billeted samples uh, at the lab. Um, TRS, the values uh, were not statistically different, uh, but we had our high sugar with uh, the PowerMax treatments. Uh, surprisingly here, uh, when you look at it numerically, there's not a whole lot of difference between a high, half rate of PowerMax versus the standard rate of 5.3 ounces. Uh, we're not seeing any difference uh, in tonnage to speak of uh, among these treatments. This cane was pretty large, pretty severely. Uh, the hurricane passed a whole lot closer to that racial area that it did to St. Gabriel. Um, when we look at our sugar uh, per acre, regardless if it's the press, or uh, the NIR, still no statistical differences uh, compared to the untreated control. Numerically, we had a little decrease uh, when we added that intake uh, to the mix. So, uh, you know, that, that's a, a little bit concerning to me. Uh, our second uh, commercial experiment was done in Cheneyville with a Harper, Harper Planning Partnership. Um, McCaleb's Flying Service supplied it with, with the airplane for us. Um, these treatments were applied on September 30th, uh, uh, you know, midway through the, uh, the early part of the season. Again, we had a standard uh, with PowerMax 5.3 ounces. 
Uh, we had a half rate of uh, PowerMax plus ANOVA at 16 ounces was our second treated and an untreated control. Uh, the plot size on this was very large, about three acre plots. Um, and it was harvested on uh, November 16th. In this situation, we took 10 stalk samples and we also uh, looked at our core weights from uh, the trucks that uh, brought this cane to the Lasuka mill. Uh, as far as statistical differences, we don't see any statistical differences in TRS. Uh, numerically, uh, it looks a lot better where we have PowerMax or PowerMax ANOVA compared to the untreated check. Uh, when you look at the core value datas, the PowerMax ANOVA actually uh, looked a little better numerically, but again, not statistically. Uh, tonnage wasn't a whole lot different. And then when we look for sugar per acre differences, no statistical differences. Uh, in both of these cases, uh, the large scale experiments, uh, this crop natural, uh, naturally matured very well this year. And uh, we had very little benefit as we got later and later into the season uh, from our ripener, um, which, which uh, is what we've seen in the, in the past uh, typically, it takes about to Thanksgiving to naturally uh, mature, but in these cases, uh, we actually uh, matured that cane uh, a little bit quicker. So just to kind of wrap it up um, and uh, summarize some of the things that we saw, uh, measured from the time of glyphosate ripener application, the gain in sugar accumulation per day average 3.9 pounds for the 40 day uh, treatment to harvest interval, 3.4 pounds for the 32 day treatment to harvest interval and two, pound day, two pounds per day under natural conditions. Um, I had some slides that got cut out by somehow. Uh, I, we also did look at variety response, uh, 615 and 201 um, what were uh, moderately responsive to some of our ripening work we put out uh, about 23% gain 739 was only moderate, but its level of sugar was really high early in the season. Um, and I have this statement on September 23rd and October uh, 21st, unripened uh, 739 yielded 215 and 250 pounds of sugar per ton, respectively, in indicating this variety is an early maturing variety. Uh, I think our breeding program did a fantastic job bringing this, this variety. Um, the ripener additives intake in ANOVA provided no benefit in terms of improving TRS, tonnage, or sugar yield in 20, 2020 as compared to glyphosate alone. These results are consistent with the results of the ripener research conducted in 2018 and 2019 at LSU and USDA with these products, and I'd extend that to be sure as well. So with that, thanks, and any questions?